I've been wanting to do a series of videos off of the question, why not? And in this case, I'd like to address the question, why not justify true belief as a de definition of knowledge? This came about when a fellow Great Debate community member asked me, what does it mean to use the term, I do not know? Before we get to that question, we need to address what it means to know. The most commonly referenced definition for knowledge is justify true belief, or JTB for short. This is Plato's definition, and generally a good placeholder for the purposes of conversation. With most having a familiarity with it, it's an easy grant for me for the sake of moving on to what it is I want to talk about. So how does JTB work? It states that when you A, have a belief, and B, that belief is justified, and C, that belief is actually true to the case, then by definition you have knowledge. So let's start off talking about belief. A belief is simply a claim. It's an opinion, a proposition, an assertion, a declaration. It's whatever you think is the case, whatever that might be. So you could say the cat is on the mat. In actuality, what you're saying is, I believe it's the case that the cat is on the mat. So just as an aside, this is not to be confused with a fact. A belief is about a fact. A fact is an obtaining state of affairs. It's whatever is the case in reality. It's independent of our beliefs. It's the thing our beliefs attempt to correspond to. So for JTB, we, we need to start with at least with a belief. So, so then we talk about justification. Justification is constituted by the reasons and evidence by which you believe the belief was caused. It's an account or the causal story of how the belief is thought to have co-responded to what it is referencing. It can amount to a verification procedure for the belief, such that someone else could know it to be the case where they to follow the justification. If you listen to that carefully in JTB, ultimately the justification is believed to have caused the belief. It boils down to a belief about the belief. So moving on to truth, there are several definitions for truth, but for brevity, I'm going to focus on just the correspondence definition. It's simple and generally what I find individuals to mean, with the exception of those who subscribe to a pragmatic theory. In the correspondence theory, truth is that which corresponds to the reality, whatever that might be. You have what is the case, and you have your belief concerning what you think that is. And when they correspond co to each other, you have truth. Notice the word, correspond, in the same way that a map is nothing like the territory and yet manages to be about the territory, your beliefs are nothing like what is the case, and yet the two correspond to each other. It is a mapping of reality, and when your map corresponds, you navigate without issue. When you have all three of these conditions satisfied, under JTB, you would be in possession of knowledge. Just as a note, because it's often confused, your knowledge is a subset of your beliefs. It is constituted by those beliefs which satisfy JTB. They are still beliefs, but under JTB, they get a special earmark as something which you believe constitutes knowledge. These are beliefs you refer to when you say, I know that the cat is on the mat, and it's what differentiates it from, I believe that the cat is on the mat. In both cases, you believe it, but in the one case, in the case of knowledge, the belief has an asterisk where you're denoting the quality to which you feel the belief rises. You believe it is justified and true. JTB definition was, and is still is, widely used, but in the late 20th century, issues arose with the definition. In the 1960s, Edmund Gettier, a professor in philosophy, presented a series of counterexamples where all three conditions were satisfied, and yet what was thought to be knowledge did not accurately reflect the state of affairs. These are known as Gettier cases or Gettier counterexamples. There are numerous varieties of these examples, but I'll offer one that I tend to use. Let's say I drive home and I stop at the gas station and I pay for gas, getting $3 in change from the attendant. As I get into my car, unbeknownst to me, the money falls out of my wallet. I get home, I put the wallet on my dresser and I head to the kitchen. My daughter comes home and realizing she owes me $3, she decides to put it in my wallet. My son then comes in and says, hey dad, do you have $3 I can borrow? I say, sure, it's in my wallet. He says, how do you know you have $3 in your wallet? I say, I just got home from the gas station and put $3 of change from the gas attendant into my wallet. He gets the wallet, and sure enough, there are $3 in it. In this case, I had a belief that there were $3 in the wallet. 
I had justification for thinking it was the case that there were $3 in my wallet. And it was in fact true that there were $3 in my wallet. However, clearly I got lucky that I had $3 in my wallet and none of what I believed was causally tied to the $3 my son found. It was a lucky coincidence. Why is this an issue? Because knowledge serves a purpose. Knowledge constitutes the propositional correspondences we can trust for future interactions. Our beliefs map the territory so that we can travel there safely. When there is a breakdown of this nature, its false positive nature is, problematic, is a problematic foundation for future interactions. So there is something about this definition that is lacking. There are JTP plus theories which attempt to address these issues by adding additional conditions for justification, but these have been shown to cause failure in other ways, and they tend to bring an ad hoc remedy to something which is fundamentally flawed. So if not JTB, what else? I subscribe to a reliabilist definition of knowledge. Reliabilism has its roots in the early 20th century, but it gained popularity in the 70s. Rather than justify true beliefs, it asserts a definition of reliably produced true beliefs for knowledge. The conditions for truth and belief are the same as in the JTB definition, with belief being a proposition about reality and truth being that which corresponds to reality. The difference comes in the form of justification not being ingredient to knowledge. In its place is a condition on the belief being in fact reliably produced. This is a model for which knowledge hinges on objective facts within reality regarding how the belief was produced, rather than subjective processes of justificatory evaluation. Justification is still critical to determining the level of confidence warranted by a belief, for persuasion of others, or for making public assertions in discourse while wanting those positions to be considered rational, but it's not ingredient to knowledge itself. This separates whether I have knowledge from knowing it to be the case that I have knowledge. Why is this persuasive to me? Well, let me share a personal case. My father had Alzheimer's. As the disease became more advanced, my father was able to know that I was his son, Bert, but would not be able to justify how it is he, that he knew I was his son, Bert. In other words, he could not raise to awareness the justification for his belief. Under a JTB definition, my father would not know that I was Bert. But then, how would we characterize his utterance, this is my son Bert? Clearly it's not a lucky guess. It is the truth, and it was no accident that he was caused to have this belief. The belief resides in him, unchanged, and it is actually the interactions which brought him to the belief, which are caused by the disease to fail him. Interestingly, having had a time previously where he could justify the belief, he would have had knowledge with the very same proposition, that is my son Bert. Nothing changed about the proposition. Within his mind, the proposition remained unchanged. So why would we say he no longer knew it? Simply because he lost track of how it is that he knew it? Let's consider a more common occasion that you may have experienced. Someone asks, do you know what time the party is? And you say 8 p.m. They say, how do you know? And you reply, I think someone told me, but I can't recall. I just know that it's at 8 p.m. In this case, you can't raise to awareness how it is you came to the belief. The person you're reporting to would have good reason to not trust you. But if it was the case that in the past, someone did in fact tell you that the party was at 8 p.m., then that belief you hold is not luck, and it's accurate. Were you asked the moment after hearing it, you'd have been able to give an account for how it is you knew it. So does forgetting how you knew it impact the validity of the belief being the case? If we go back to a map making analogy, this would be akin to standing in the woods and mapping out the path, confirming the distances by means of comparison, and upon returning to the same spot later, looking at the map but not remembering how it is the marks came to be confirmed. Would the mapping not still correspond to the territory? Is that not what we mean by knowledge? A reliably mapped landmark that corresponds to what is the case, independent of what we might think of it. Under a reliably produced true belief definition, that a belief is knowledge would be an objective fact within reality, independent of any subjective opinion of the belief, including the opinion of the belief holder for or against it. Knowledge would be constituted by those beliefs which were in fact produced by reliable interaction between what is the case and the belief forming processes.
In all of these cases, I find this to be a more persuasive definition for what it is we'd like to refer to when using the term knowledge. We want to refer to something whose facticity is independent of subjective evaluation, that you have knowledge or you don't. And what you can be mistaken about is your belief that it is the case that you have it or don't. That we would know, that we knew, would be independent of whether we in fact knew. And so for myself, that is why not JTB as a definition of knowledge.